my Thevenin analysis for R1 showed me that VR1 was equal to 17.76 volts and I R1 is equal to 8.071 milliamps. Okay, so that's what I got doing Thevenin. All right, so now I'm gonna just show that on my schematic here. Um, so I'm gonna get over into green. And so from here to here, so here's my voltmeter. Okay, plus, minus, whoops. Plus, minus, all right. So there's my voltage for R1. Well, okay, so if I was looking at it just like that, Right, so I got plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. Now the, the polarity of, of R3 as yet is, is not apparent. So if you can see it, good for you. Um, I can't see it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some analysis to find that. Okay, so my voltage for R1 I found to be um, that 17 point seven six volts okay so now Kirchhoff can will tell me the voltage of R5 so let's just do this little loop here okay so I'm gonna start here and just go clockwise around the loop and end in the same point so Kirchhoff says that zero volts equals the sum of the voltages on this loop and I'm coming up here and I'm seeing my minus side of my 50 volts minus 50 volts plus VR1 plus VR5. All right, okay, so that actually ends up being, let's solve for VR5, so VR5 equals, uh, let's see, get everything on the other side, so 50 volts minus VR1, VR5 equals 50 volts minus 17.76 volts all right okay well let's see what it is let's bring in the old calculator here it comes all right come on over here calculator oh look how blurry it is going slow 50 volts minus that number that I had from before is equal to 30, 32.24 volts. I'm going to transfer that over to my schematic. 32.24 volts for our VR5. All right, now I'm going to switch over to current for a second because I, I, I'm, I'm hoping or I'm thinking that there should be some current flow between uh, or across uh, that bridge. So let's just see how it goes. So here's total current. Here's total current. I'm just going to say I total right there. I total. All right. Well, we have some current for R4. Or so this would be IR4. Okay. And so IR5 splits off. Okay. IR1. Okay. Where is it? Oh, there it goes. IR2, okay. There's IR2 again. Here's IR4 again. All right, so now my nodes are showing, basically, I, I've got, I know something's gonna go across that bridge. I just don't know what yet. So I know, I do know that IR1 is 8.071 milliamps. Okay, that should be a seven. Okay, now what, so if I figure out what IR5 is, I can look at that node, so IR5 equals VR5 over R5. Okay, a little, little Kirchhoff, a little Ohm's Law. Okay, so IR5 equals 32.24 over, volts over, uh, what is R5's value, 3.3 K ohms. Okay, IR5 equals, let's just bring in the old calculator, 
Okay, that voltage divided by, not times, divided by uh, 3.3K. 9, 9.771 milliamps. So that, so IR5 is greater than IR1 by just a little bit. So that tells me that when I hit this node and go that way, some current is going that way. Okay, so some amount of current is going that way. Well, let's find out what it is. So IR3 equals IR5 minus IR1. IR3 equals, what would I say it was? 9.771 milliamps minus 8.071 milliamps. Okay, so IR3, now I'm getting kind of crazy here. I, let me scroll down just a bit. IR3 equals, let's just bring up the calculator. Okay, okay, this less rounded number minus somewhere up here, that less rounded number. All right, so I get one, 1 1.7 milliamps splitting off and going through R3. Now, current goes from negative to positive, so I also know that my polarity is negative positive from left to right. Okay, that's good to know. That'll help us on the next thing. So let's go ahead and find VR3. We got this thing, I think, pretty much cracked open now. So VR3 equals IR3 times R3. VR3 equals 1.7 milliamps times 1K ohms. So VR3 equals 1.7 volts. Let's just see how my fast and furious mental mathing is going here. Okay, so that number, less rounded, times 1e to the third. Uh, sure enough, 1.7 volts. All right. I'm going to write that down here, 1.7 volts, and that current I didn't get, let's write that down too, 1.7 milliamps, alright, this is getting really good, okay, now pay attention, okay, whoops, okay, pay attention to those polarities, because now I'm going to do a voltage loop, Kirchhoff voltage loop, including these two or including the you know r1 r3 r4 um, i think i like r2 r3 r5 i mean it doesn't matter both of them should be true so kirchhoff says that any closed loop the voltage sum to zero so let's just say voltage sum to zero i'm going to go here down through r2 across r3 and down through r5 now that's kind of a crazy loop but the only thing in that path I don't know is, our, is the voltage of R2, so this will be fun. So minus 50 volts plus VR2. Now I'm hitting the plus side of VR2, plus side of VR3, and then the plus side of VR5. Now I know all those voltages. Let's just go ahead and solve for uh, VR2. So V, V, R2 equals 50 volts minus V, R3 minus V, R5. Okay, so that got everything in there, good. V, R2 equals 50 volts minus V, R3 was 1.7 volts minus V, R5, which was 32.24 volts. All right, let's see what the old calculator says about that one. Okay, here it is. Okay, so 50 minus that number minus. I'm just using less rounded numbers, so you can if you're if you're only round if you're rounding to four digits, you should be fine or close enough. Just make sure you grab the right thing out of your calculator. So I'm getting VR2 to be 16.0 
zero six volts. All right, so now that makes this 16.06 .06 volts. So Kirchhoff tells us now that if I do the outside loop, um, I should be able to find VR4. So zero equals minus 50 volts plus VR2 plus VR4. So uh, VR4 equals 50 volts minus VR2. Okay, just what I said, I think VR4 equals, let's see what the calculator says about that one. Okay, 50 minus that minimally rounded number equals 30, 33.94 volts. Okay, so I think we've got this thing figured out. One little double check we can do is I can go down, I can check that other cross loop where it goes up through the supply, down R1, across R3, and down R4. So Kirchhoff says that zero equals the sum of any closed loop, the sum of the voltages on any closed loop. So minus 50 volts plus VR1 minus this time, so I'm going from left to right, minus VR3 plus VR4 should equal zero. Let's see. Zero equals, okay, minus 50 volts plus 17.76 volts minus 1.7 volts plus, um, and what was VR4? 33.94 volts. I didn't actually write that down. 33.94 volts. All right. Okay. So let's just see if zero equals zero. All right. So let's bring on, bring in the calculator. Come on calculator. Okay. Minus 50 plus 17.76. Now I'm not really, I'm just using my numbers this time. Minus 1.7 plus 33.94. So we should get within 5% of zero. And look at that, zero. So whatever in the, whatever it was, my calculator may have rounded it off, but zero equals zero. So everything is good with the world. Now there is a couple more things that we can do to double check just for fun, because I know you love it, right? So let's get in here and do this node analysis, all right? This node right here. Because I know I've got 1.7 milliamps coming in, I still don't know what IR4, IR4 is or IR2. Um, but basically, we know that we know that uh, all the whatever the sum of whatever goes into a node equals the sum of whatever comes out. So that means that uh, R2. Now I've got I, I've got 1.7 milliamps coming in. So R2 is going to be 1.72 or 1.7 milliamps greater than IR4. Let's just see what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna come out here. Let me see if I can make some room without look, getting too crazy here. Okay, avert your eyes. I'm gonna scroll. All right, so there I've made a little room, maybe. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna find IR2's voltage or current, I mean, sorry, IR2 is VR2 over R2. IR2 equals 16.06 .06 volts over 1.8 K ohms. Let's just see what the calculator says about that. Okay, so I'm not, I'm using rounded numbers now. 16.06 um, .06 divided by 1.8 e to the third, because I'm just double checking. I just want to see that it's close. Okay, 8.922 milliamps. Okay, so that's making me feel good. All right, so now IR4 is going to be VR4 over R4. IR4 equals 33.94 volts over 4.7 K. 
IR4 equals, let's see what the calculator says. 30, and I'm not round, I'm just using rounded numbers because I'm just doing double checks now. Divided by 4.7e to the third, and that equals 7, 7 7.221 milliamps. All right, so the sum of the go what's going into this node should equal the sum of what's going out. <coughs> so another way to say that is basically if R, I've got R2 leaving and R4 and R3 entering, if I take the difference from what I just found of IR2 to IR4, well, I can see that IR2 should be the greater, the greater number. Um, so IR2 minus IR4 should equal and verify IR3. So let's just do that. So IR3 should equal IR2 minus IR4. Uh, 8.922 milliamps minus 7.221 milliamps. Well, we're getting crazy near the edge there. So let's see. Let's see if Kirchhoff's happy. All right, and this will be the last double check that I do because I feel pretty good about this. Um, well, we'll see if it works, I guess. Okay, clear. So that current minus that current is exactly, well, pretty close, 1.701 milliamps. Okay, happy. All right. <clears throat> so basically, we were able to thevenize for R1 and then use Kirchhoff to find all the voltages. Now, I used some double checks and explained. Um, along the way. It ended up taking me about an hour to do all of that um, and I, there is some I did set, have some technical difficulties which I'll probably just clip out of the video so we'll see what the final cut time looks like um, but if I basically all my voltages have been found so I found the first one with Thevenin and the other four with Kirchhoff analysis and actually you can do this really quickly um, once you have that first voltage and uh, you just got to keep track of what you're doing. I wrote out all my steps. Um, you know, for the Kirchhoff, you know, we do get to the point where we can kind of see see what to do. Um, but drawing the loop equations is a good skill, um, which you will need for more complex things. Or, 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 and it's always a good idea for unfamiliar circuits. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video right now. Let's just take a uh, a little tour of what we did. So I was given this circuit. Um, we did a R Thevenin. Okay, so I did a, a series of redraws for R Thevenin, probably more than you know you you would need to do if you're familiar with the circuit. But I wanted to demonstrate. Um, always on a clean sheet of paper. Always eliminate everything you don't need for that step, so you're not tempted to look at it and try to make sense out of things. Okay, so now here's your v -thevenin, the V-Thevenin steps that we went through to find that V-Thevenin number. And all of that went into um, our equivalent circuit. Let's see. Okay, and so we were able to find um, the, I, the, the current for R1 and the voltage for R1 in our original circuit. We went back, did some Kirchhoff analysis, and look at all this amazing analysis that we did. It's looking pretty busy and crazy, so if it, I mean, you just look at that, you know you've been doing something good. Okay, so anyway, we were able to find the first voltage with, so R1's voltage with Thevenin, the rest of the voltage is we used Kirchhoff analysis, and then I did a series of double checks just to, just to feel good. Um, but I was feeling pretty good, uh, you know, once we started kind of seeing, once we got all those voltages and they worked, it, everything looked pretty good. All right, and then checking the currents is a good step if you're, you know, you absolutely need to be correct. Um, Kirchhoff's not going to lie to you. He is your best friend. He did clean up after the party. So I think I'm going to end it right there. And, you know, thanks for watching. I hope that you actually learned something. Go try this on your own and then uh, see how you did.